Uh, bit of history between the two, right? Yep, a little bit of history. Um, yesterday, Waypoint 100. Congratulations to Waypoint for their 100th oh, yes. local. Congrats. Good stuff. Um, numbers did 3-0. D-Dog in Grands. Uh, D-Dog came from a, uh, a really hard loser's run all the way to Grands from round one. Uh, has DQ in the first and like, in winners. And this could be the round back we're looking for, uh, you know, a whole day of practice back to, like, you know, the island and sat on the ferry. You know, hilarious. Hey, yeah. D Dog is from where, you said? Long Staten, Island? Uh, Staten Island. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, the ferry is Staten Island. The, right. the lure is Long Island. The lure, yes. The lure. I know it all too well. No, oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> so, either way, seeing a really solid lead from numbers, uh, probably mimicking what he was able to do on. Um, on, at Waypoint yesterday, right. just keeping a good lead on D Dog as much as he can. And that block placement is not going to turn numbers whatsoever, and neither will that TNT. Yeah, we were seeing D Dog earlier in uh, his previous match against. Ooh, I, f I forget who D Dog played. It was the Pokemon trainer. Oh, yeah, Noku, Noku. He, he was. Oh, sorry about that. Can you hear me? There you go. All right, so. Boom. No, I was just saying real quick D Dog was really mixing uh, Noku up with the TNT ledge traps. Just really baiting out the jump from ledge and was able to punish him several times, but John is just being relentless right now, showing that why nice. John has that historic set record over D Dog. Yeah, absolutely. Numbers is is, is just showing out what we can do against someone oh. like uh, Steve. Uh, should be able to come back. No, Mag Magnus yeah. is not gonna make it this time. Numbers. Uh, he's Numbers is pretty good at keeping his jump, but that was a really really harsh fare, I believe, um, from D Dog. For sure, and this is a pretty significant lead that John has tacked up, but all it takes is one up tilt, right? No, it's one up tilt, and then you start like playing creative mode, and then you start yep. doing more up tilts, and then suddenly you're at 80%. But same, the same kind of applies to Wii Fit in a way, when mm. she does at least have deep breathing active. She has Sun Citation at her disposal, she has the soccer ball, and she has that frame 6 back air whenever she really wants to kick it out. Yeah, that back air taking that stock there, but here comes D-Dog trying to figure out some way to get back to the center of the stage. Oop. She's so skinny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she actually weaved through the hitbox of the magma block up smash because of how thin her hitbox is. That's hilarious. Oh my. These dogs are probably not expecting that uh, that kind of thing to whiff like that. Ooh, that back air is so strong. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's death. Yeah, Even numbers SD knew that. there from John. But yep. D-Dog still only having a, you know, 62%. Could mount the comeback. Oh, here we go. Be right here, right? 44%. And numbers just barely getting deep breathing active. That block saved numbers. Yep. That block saved. That would have killed numbers immediately. Um, it'd be your own block sometimes. It'd be your own blocks. For sure. D Dog looking for their revenge from Monday's matches. But let's see how this one finishes out. Deep breathing online. Oh, deep breathing. Interesting. I just noticed this right now. Probably a good tool to obliterate the blocks, no? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, with that extra damage increase. And also, Numbers kind of knows the safe matchup in terms of uh, mm, yeah. the blocks. Knowing that you can just knock out the first, the closest to the floor block, and you can run right through all of them. Super, yeah. super advantageous. And it kind of throws D-Dog in for a loop whenever it happens to him. D-Dog really slowing things down here and, and making John work for this last stock. Ooh. Oh, oh I thought the nice roll. Yeah. <laughs> Great anticipation there by John. All right. As so. everyone knows, D Dog is running out of supplies and also running out of a stock. <laughs> I was going to mention biggest thing with Steve is resource management. Yeah. Uh, D Dog had basically no resources left. Maybe like two uh, iron, like one wool. Oh, yeah, one wood and one, like two stone. Uh, you have nothing. You mm. have an, un, um, an uncrafted diamond. And you had reinforced my cartridge disposal, which you couldn't use efficiently against some like numbers. Right. Biggest thing with uh, Steve has to be that, that resource management and your opponent being aware of what you lack. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So many top players speak to that point, right? Mm -hmm. About really keeping track of Steve's resources and then adapting their their counterplay to that, just to figure out what they could do, what's a bit safer. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we're about to jump into game two and. John taking the first game. Very close, very competitive. Let's see how the rest of the set goes. So I'm actually not surprised at the PS2 counter pick uh, mm, yeah. for D-Dog, just because PS2 as a stage in general really, really favors zoners and a really slower playstyle um, and a very, very ranged playstyle, which yeah. Steve can adapt to so easily with block placement, with uh, minecart, with bomb trapping, I'm sorry, uh, TNT traps, right. and things like that. So D Dog choosing PS2, not surprised whatsoever. It's just how numbers is gonna have to deal with a little bit extra space on that uh main platform. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm curious from a materials perspective, sort of how prominent you get certain materials on, on PS2. Like, not sure if you know or... So, if I recall correctly, on PS2, the edges where it's silver, you get more iron, and okay. the middle you get more of your base resources, um, gotcha. wooden, and stone. Yeah. And I also want to say diamond also comes out much faster on the on the metal part. On the metal part? Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. But Dog has crazy RNG, and he got it yeah. on the platform, so... Yeah, D-Dog looking stacked up with their resources. Mm -hmm. Got gold and diamond on deck. And uh, see, we have a ton of stone at our disposal. Much, much uh, more formidable wall block, and you can definitely make it back. Um, keeping that jump, but you're not making that from that up smash. Absolutely not. I feel like the blast zone on PS2 in comparison to where were we? Battlefield in the last? Uh, small battlefield. Small battlefield. Uh, small battlefield has way longer of a, of a bottom area, right? Like, uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah, because we saw in the last match that forward air knocked John all the way down and John wasn't able to make it back. But here mm -hmm. on PS2, John was able to make it back and just eating damage, saying, okay, you wanted, to you wanted to make it back? Well, eat this. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. It, it's, all, it's all about plat platforms and all yeah. about uh, stage, stage picking, especially against a character like Steve, who is so... Um, has such a big presence in changing the meta of the game. For sure. And we're kind of seeing that with D-Dog having the lead right now, uh, stock and percentage-wise. Yeah, definitely a solid adjustment by D-Dog here in game two. Oh! Yeah. And yep. then, yep, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> the Ram Sun Sao, and the biggest thing about Sun Sao, you get a little bit of healing from that 2% healing every time you use a uh, charge up Sun Sao. Right. Well then. All right. John helping knock down the wall. Funny enough, I guess in this matchup is not as useful, but John was crouching so much in his previous matches earlier, really utilizing it against a against a Palutena earlier today. Yes, uh, um, C, believe, I believe, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it doesn't seem like it's that useful in this matchup. It seems like almost everything Steve throws out is, is gonna hit you. Yeah. Like Minecart and um, and it. Well, yeah. If you're if you're trying to crouch under Anvil, it's not the smartest move. It's just gonna smush you. Animaniac style. Yeah, uh, getting hit by him, Anvil eats up so much of your shield because, like, in actual Minecraft, you get injured if you get hit by oh. falling Anvil. So, a little funny little mechanic they add into this game. Um, now, as you can see, Dinook is out of resources, actually doesn't have a pickaxe. We are mining with our bare hands right now. And Numbers is guarding that crafting table as best as he can, which also I think is a really, really solid counterplay against Steve in general. Just either True. guarding or breaking that mining table, uh, that mining table, that crafting, that crafting bench whenever you can. Makes him unable to craft um, their, their stronger weapons. And there's that Sunset Station once more. Getting it again. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, I found it super interesting, John sort of waiting it out, um, even though D-Dog was low on resources. I, I wonder if that's sort of the time to sign a, kind of go in and scrap when they're, when they're low. Uh, but I guess it you know, really doesn't matter, because Steve, with or without resources, is just going to throw the axe on you. Well, so is we fit, and unfortunately, we fit doesn't really need to mine for resources the way that uh, yeah. Steve does. And as you can see, Numbers has been actually hounding D Dog on that crafting table for like a minute now, finally allowing D Dog to uh, craft some diamond tools as it's supposed. Now we have diamond uh, sword, we have diamond pickaxe. Be careful with that. Oh my god, I think Soccer Ball saved Numbers. Yeah, that was wild. Because I would have killed, he absolutely would have mm -hmm. killed. Beautiful use of roll into F, uh, to F2. Snipe. Oh, almost the second snipe with the soccer That's ball. That's huge. John doing a good job of keeping D Dog in disadvantage. Are we going to see a third sun salutation? Let's call it. When? When Five. D Dog is like, trying back to stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. I can feel it. It's right. approaching. Another four throw. Yep, just like a soccer ball. Not quite taking Steve yet. Here comes soccer ball. Sun salutation. And you oh. eat it with the minecart. That was so smart by D. There it oh! is! Oh, it's the third one hit <laughs> when we least expected it. Well, John taking that one 2 0 over D Dog, and John will make it now into winner's finals against Zamba. Yep. Yeah. Winner's finals against Zamba. Um, wasn't expecting that. I've used being, whenever D Dog and Zamba come together, they're like a little, a little, a little pair now. It's really funny. When they go, whenever oh, they nice. come to an event together, they always like go to winner's finals, and it's always like. They go like some most obscure character, you know. D Dog goes Dr. Mario, and Zamba goes like Link. And I'm just like. Uh, this is this is this is much warmer. I've seen that before. Yeah.
they just got an arsenal of who goes, characters. Who, who goes together. what? So D Dog goes Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario? Oh, Dr. Mario? Wait, so you're saying if it was D Dog versus Zombie? Yeah. Oh. oh it's just I like, see. like a really I thought goofy. You meant John. I'm like, he ain't played Doc oh, in I have, a day in his life. I have never seen numbers ever in my life choose yeah. off of green female Wii Fit. I mean, you have the Sword Fighter. Okay, I choose to ignore John that. plays a Mii Sword Fighter. Yes, yeah. in um, in Ness matchups. Because oh. he's a firm believer that it is Wii Fit's worst matchup. Ness is Wii Especially Fit's PK Chris and Syrup, I believe, he'll go against oh, with interesting. Sword Fighter. Nice. Is it is yeah. it more of like an even matchup, would you say, with Mii Sword Fighter? Or is um, it he just believes strictly? it is. Okay. He believes it is. Uh, I think it kind of...